What's up again everybody, today we have something super special. I am killing two birds with one stone with this video because today we're gonna look at, in glorious 4K, all of the Monarch cold foils that I've managed to collect up until this point. I have uh, opened these in boxes, I have made some trades, um, several were some very kind, generous gifts, and I want to share these all with you so that we can also check out this purchase that I made. I bought a 4K webcam, and I want to test it out, so I'm going to use this as an opportunity to test it out. I want to share with you the beauty of these cards that I've fallen in love with. Cold foils are one of my favorite things in this game, and uh, we're just going to take a nice leisurely stroll looking at every cold foil that I have. So as you uh, might imagine, oh, this is my unfortunate one that I've pulled most recently. Um, I have my fair share of iron hide pieces of equipment. Um, even, and I, I wanna say this, and I want, people to, I want people to understand, even though we had that just really painful case with um, <laughs> all of those iron hide equipments, they are still beautiful cards. They are still super fun to uh, collect and to, to look at and that sort of thing. And I want to show each and every one of them to you. I'm not going to show you all. <laughs> I guess I'm not going to take out all of the other iron hide legs that I have because I do have two other sets of iron hide legs. But you know what? I will do this. I will show you. This one's one of my favorites. The iron hide plate. I'm going to take it out of the sleeve. The iron hide plate is just breathtaking to look at because of how much cold foiling they have. It's so pretty. Oh my goodness, that card is fantastic. So all of these are obviously cold foil commons, uh, but they are, that, just because they're common rarity doesn't mean they aren't beautiful to look at. Um, and this is a particularly good one. I think it's interesting. I've tried to find the best lighting possible in actually catching all of the, all of the beauty of these cards. And it is really tricky, like if I could, if I could put my hand in front of each of the... I want to diffuse the light as much as possible when looking at these cards because uh, diffused light and like not in... like I guess the best way to say it is indirect light sources are just the absolute nuts. They're so beautiful to look at these. You want indirect light sources when looking at cold foils because they just pop like that right there is direct light and sometimes that's fun. But look at that. It really shows where the cold foiling is as you as you look around. And in 4K, no less. Look at us go. All right, next up we have Time Skippers. Time Skippers was the first cold foil that I actually got to open. It was in our very first box. It was in our TCG Player pre-release box. And uh, it's a pretty one. You know, it's, it's not too bad. Uh, the the boots sparkling and the sparkling that they put in the water is pretty cool. I do appreciate that. I do like that a lot. Um, I, as always, the bordering on, on cold foils is just so exciting to see in a pack. That little flash on the side is so pretty. And uh, just these cards in general. I love how they don't overdo it and they don't go super gaudy with it. And it's okay for some card games to do that, I think. Uh, the ones that are really loud and in your face I think sometimes that's there's a place for that, but Flesh and Blood, I think, strikes a, a beautiful balance of, uh, of not just like being ornate, but not over the top. I think that's very, it's very understood and very, like, most easily found in the bordering of cards. You look at the card bordering, not on these generics, of course, but you look at the card bordering across the board and they are just, just so immaculate. And some of them do feel pretty over the top, but but not not too far in my opinion. They don't go too far with it, and uh, that's what I love. This one's great, Blood Drop Brocade. Um, if you can really get it to sing, like in a, in a darker, low lit setting, these things just shoot out. They catch any light that's out there, and they just they sparkle. It's pretty amazing. I wonder if I just turned off most lights. How, uh, how much that would affect it. Because it catches all down the gold of the dress. Make it look really good. Stubby Hammers is uh, next up. Let's get that one out of the sleeve. I'm Yes, I am taking all of these cold foils out of their sleeves just so that we can enjoy these together. 
I mean, we, we own the cards, we might as well. No one can tell you otherwise. That's cool. It's cool when you look at them shine like that. This is a card that uh, I would certainly... Ooh, there's a little, little spec. I would certainly run this card in like a budget or a, just a fun chain deck for an extra buff, like right at whenever you want it on certain things. It's, it's fun to til tilt them at the angle too because they catch differently. Beautiful. We are uh, rounding out the cold foil commons. Next one's Ebonfold. I just got this one in a trade recently. Let's take Ebonfold out. Ebonfold is a really pretty one. This one's cool. They use a lot of cold foiling right down the middle. Um, I wish I could, if I could cover my hand with, ah, let's just do that. Let's try it. This one feels very like, just see all that cold foiling, very flat. This one, they don't try to do too much um, layering or, you know, just like depth stuff with the cold foiling. It is very flat, but it's very pretty, particularly in person, because uh, when you see this thing in person, the the center like galaxy part right there kind of just pops a little bit more than than what you can get on camera even at 4k resolution lighting is so important with these cards and it's one of those things that i was actually messing around with trying to get the light in the right spot so that you can hold these things and get them to really shine some of them pop even more look at this halo of illumination it's like you can't not make this one pop it's like mirror finish it's fantastic what a beautiful card. Also, my computer's probably screaming right now, recording at 4K. I can't even imagine how large this file's gonna be, but that's not what's important. What's important is seeing these cards in their full glory. If you haven't had the chance to, uh, chance to appreciate some cold foils, this is your opportunity. This is your chance. Sound off, what do you think about all of these cold foils? Ooh, this, this next one's a good one. I got this from my good buddy, Mitch, over at Midtown Merchant. Dreamweavers, cold foil Dreamweavers was one of those cards. When I saw the art released for this card, I was like, I want that in cold foil. I will take that in cold foil, please and thank you. Uh, and I'll take it twice on Sunday. This is beautiful in cold foil. I, I just love the coloring. I've said it in other videos, I'm a sucker for galaxy print and just aesthetics and art in general and uh, good use of color, like pops of color. And this one hits me right where it wants, right where I want it. Beautiful little card. Hooves of the Shadow Beast. So after that crazy case, I decided to, um, to crack a couple more boxes from another case. And uh, you can see the results of that on this channel for the next couple of weeks or really two weeks I guess I'm gonna post some shorts from the from the uh, box and then I'm gonna post a, uh, a sealed thing that I did where I opened six packs and walked you through what I would make for a sealed if you wanted to see what's in that box um, right after that I opened another box just for fun and I pulled a hooves of the shadow beast cold foil which is really cool looking love that this next one now we enter the uh, cold foil majestics this is raiden duskbane an interesting thing about uh, the cold foil majestics cold foil majestics are statistically more rare than legendaries cold foil legendaries because every legendary is cold foil in this set in the first edition of course and because of that if you pull a legendary it's going to be a cold foil if you pull a majestic it's not necessarily going to be a cold foil majestic so these are technically more rare than legendaries price won't dictate that sometimes unless it's the card we're going to look at after luminaris oh man do you guys remember watching the video where i opened this where i last packed this that was fantastic Speaking of fantastic, this card is fantastic. You should definitely play this. If you have this in Majestic, you should play it. If you have a Majestic cold foil of it, you should play that one too. Which is what I do, I play this card. Wow, it's too bright. All right, the next one I'm really scared to take out of the sleeve because this one is perhaps the most expensive card out of everything in Monarch, minus the Fable. And that is the cold foil alternate art galaxy black this one's interesting because they they really only put the foiling right there dead center on the 
on the sword itself. And they do they do it in flex, in those little flex of, uh, of light zoom in. They do that as well. You can't catch that as well in the in the video, but it's there. Just trust me. It's there nonetheless. All right, on to the legendaries, the cold foil legendaries. Because all of them are cold foil. Did I mention that? Yes, I did. This was the first legendary we got our hands on, and this was a just a fantastically wonderful gift from the folks at Legend Story Studios. We got to spoil the Carrion Husk, and spoiler alert, this card is super good. This card's so good. It's almost unfair how good this card is. There's a bug on it! Oh my god! What was that? Did you see that? You probably saw that in 4K. I mean, it makes sense. The bugs are uh, probably attracted to to the husk, right? That was crazy. I'm glad I got that on camera. There is a little fleck there at the top center you can see. I'm sure you can see it in 4K, but it's up there. No big deal. Uh, the next legendary is a legendary we opened. And it's the first legendary we opened. Vestige of Soul. Wow, look at that. It just pops like that. That's awesome. Vestige of Soul. A card that um, does possibly see play in certain decks, but it's it's just kind of it's kind of tricky to use. I'm not gonna lie. I've thought a lot about this card, and uh, there's times where you can definitely use it in Bolton, and there's times where you could definitely use it in Prism. But I think it's tricky to uh, to really figure out if you can use it consistently and constantly. And sometimes you're just like, man, I wish I could just block with armor. If I could just block with armor, I'd be happy. And you can't, and you're like, not happy. And so, I don't know. I'm still kind of on the fence about that card. You know, a card I'm not on the fence about is this next one. Phantasmal Footsteps. This is the card, the legendary, really, that we ended our uh, <laughs> birthday case opening stream, my wife and I. She opened some pretty shoes, and these are every bit the pretty shoes she was describing these are this is a fantastic card gotta be my favorite cold foil in the set this this art so i'm a fan of blues and purples pinks like that sort of thing and oh my goodness it's just so beautiful this card is fantastic the one we pulled looks pretty decent overall i mean the uh corners and you, obviously you'd have to see this on like a black border but it looks decent overall, and just a fantastic card in general. Now we come to some cards I traded for. Uh, the first one being... Valiant Dynamo. I made a trade with a card that I pulled out of uh, one of the boxes in that case I didn't record. And <laughs> it, was, uh, it was pretty cool. I made this trade, I got this card. And I wanted this card because uh, I feel like this card has so much playability. So much playability. And uh, I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but... It's one that I wanted, so I went and I found a way to get it. I appreciate the guy who traded with me. Hope he uh, got everything on his end. You know, in this high resolution, you can see all the stuff going on in the background, too. Some, some definite fighting going on. Also, part of that trade was this beautiful Doomsday, which, and this is when I, this is what I was thinking about when I was talking about those borders. The bordering on these cards are just beautiful. They're just well done. Like I said, it's ornate, but it's not over the top. You know, when you see these bordering card, like this this card border in cold foil. The way it pops is just, oh, it's just beautiful. It's immaculate. And this is a clean copy, too, so we can all enjoy it together. If you were curious, the difference between a cold foil and a rainbow foil probably should have led with this, I'm not going to lie. Uh, the difference between the two is that the, uh, the cold foil, like, shimmers, looks silvery. The rainbow foil is more, usually more fully across. And uh, so you can definitely tell if you're holding a cold foil and you're holding a rainbow foil, you can definitely tell. The final card we're going to look at 
This was a gift, and uh, this was a gift, I don't know if he wants me to say, but this was a very, very kind gift. And uh, this actually completes the legendary collection. I was able to trade for um, the other legendaries, or pull two of them, or been very kindly gifted by LSS. And this is the final legendary. And so I was able, and this, is, this was my hope from the beginning, I wanted to collect a cold foil legendary set from this set. And I'm very, very thankful to have the opportunity to collect them so that I can have them. I am definitely one of those people that will collect for aesthetic reasons. Um, I'm sure right now the prices on these are just dropping like a rock, as is many things <laughs> with Monarch, just because I think people were so ready to uh, just buy the boxes, flip the cards, make a ton of money. And uh, there were a lot of people that might have had that idea. And when there's a lot of people that do, there's a lot of people that try it and uh, you run out of space to do that. But nevertheless, those are all the cold foils that I have. I'm sure they'll go up in value as, uh, as time goes on, but uh, I don't plan on selling them. They are too beautiful and I love looking at them. LSS, as always, you done good with your art, your aesthetics. It's what got me into the game. It's what's uh, one, of the, one of the many factors that's kept me in the game. I hope you guys enjoyed looking at these cards. I hope uh, the 4K paid off. As always, everybody, thanks for watching.